Hello and welcome to Policy Square. Policy Square is a series of dialogues with policy makers and thinkers hosted by Primus Partners and Business World. In this edition of Policy Square, we are joined by the Honourable Member of Parliament, Dr. Fozia Khan. Dr. Khan is a member of the Rajya Sabha from Maharashtra. She is the National President of the Nationalist Mahila Congress, the Women's Wing of the Nationalist Congress Party, the NCP. She was also earlier a minister in the Maharashtra government. Apart from her political face, Dr. Khan is also an educationist. She is the president of the Federation of All Maharashtra Minority Education. Ma'am, welcome to Policy Square. In this edition of Policy Square, we would like to discuss some questions around social and financial inclusion, particularly around women and the marginalized. That's very nice. We, we are Good also gentlemen. seeing this change come about in the SHGs and the self-help groups. Yeah. Uh, of course, the cooperatives and startups and rural social entrepreneurs uh, who are actually very well positioned to, you know, opening up economic opportunities as well as development in their local communities. Uh, so from your experience, I mean, you are working with so many institutions uh, as part of the Federation, uh, you know, what more can be done? Uh, in your uh, experience and with, in your opinion, to make the results of these SHGs and these startups, uh, especially the rural startups, uh, better? I think one very, very important initiative that the government must take is about taxation. There must be relaxation in taxation for women initiatives, which is not there. GST has to be reduced you know there should be many uh, for instance there's one uh, kind of binding by the government that when you have a business in various states you need to have an office in every state so why can't one office do especially when e-commerce comes in and e-commerce today is a very very important yeah. avenue for women sitting in the village whatever they make if they get access to um, you know export it or they are able to market their products on the web this is nothing like it but for that you know for e-commerce initiatives by women government must relax taxes and relax certain conditions and if necessary government should come out with a legislation for this even i was considering that i if i can i should prepare a private members bill on this topic because this is very important self-help group the movement which had taken off so well i think it has uh, reached a plateau level now they need markets they need access to markets like That's you said it. through they need uh, facilities yes. for it they need yes. special uh, relaxations and if those are provided i think women entrepreneurs can really come off well right and this whole uh, you know movement about local vocal for local as well as one block one product yeah that a lot of those kind of initiatives would help you mentioned e-commerce uh, also a bit of your views on the role of technology to connect uh, you know excluded or uh, vulnerable uh, people like the rural the tribal the the indigenous groups rehabilitated women so that we can you know create capacities for them to access uh, information benefits and as you just also mentioned uh, indicated markets if they are entrepreneurs see whether it's training whether it's branding whether it's uh, anything marketing you need access through the online system today and it's so beautiful now uh, especially the pandemic has proved that you can do everything online today so teaching can be done online training can be done online marketing can be done online today we are almost in the urban areas we almost depend on things our food also comes home you know on its own but what is the problem in rural and remote areas especially when you mm. talk about tribals and the non-reachable sectors connectivity is the main issue so if the government works with that if we have better connectivity i think we'll have better access and even those marginalized uh, women or sectors will be able to have better access so i find that one solution 
like government must work with better connectivity in rural areas and that will solve many many problems right i just hope it doesn't create more pro it will definitely solve problems but let me come to a little the other another angle so smartphones and uh, social media uh, have made uh, access rather instant access to instant communication instant information and of course opinion diverse opinion do you think there is anything like too much information too much communication is there is there a, a you know a, a negative side uh, to to use of technology let's take cyber crime for instance certainly technology doesn't come without its side effects you know even medicines have side effects so uh, like that although medicine cures you it's beneficial for you but then you have to take medicine with all its side effects so technology also has an adverse side unfortunately which has to be catered to see you talked about cyber cyber crime cyber bullying or uh, children getting exposed to things which they shouldn't at a certain age because uh, you see these pop ups coming even in children's cartoons you know the um, pop ups that come up are very very um, maybe harmful for the for a growing child or uh, there is woman abuse or there's child pornography there are so many things which uh, the government must make sure that something is done about it i'm happy that we have cyber crime you know very now in this area our uh, police yes. and our uh, judicial system is working quite efficiently we are moving towards it but you know the speed with which technology is growing man is not able to match that speed you know the world is changing today we have artificial intelligence and uh, now intel internet has started thinking for us mm. so even our thinking goes at a slower pace than what internet is thinking for instance um this makes certain uh, you know things on the internet make us start believing things which we may not uh, it feeds you what you want to read about because of the artificial intelligence no what i'm trying to say is that supposing uh, there is a certain kind of philosophy which uh, somebody wants to hammer into your head mm -hmm. then the kind of uh, channels or the uh, sites you are watching if you are uh, you know at a particular uh, ideological uh, this then you start getting influenced by that ideology right so this is like influencing your thinking so much um, that you are uh, not having your own creative thinking left to yourselves this is a big harmful effect i feel that man should be able to analyze on his own think on his own but we are being sent sensitized to such a level sometimes when you sit and talk among yourselves you suddenly see that uh, whatever your conversation is taking place uh, this comes up on your mobile phone right right the search uh, engine is yeah, very active yeah i am talking about sarees and then suddenly uh, something yeah, about sarees comes listening to you True. so it's sometimes so surprising that how does this happen right we have not even touched our mobile phones but then our topic of discussion we are seeing there right so sometimes it's really alarming yes. that uh, you know whether we have this privacy or not so privacy is something which is a very very major issue today so to be do we really need to have more community based uh, information because okay the aged the gullible uh, the less informed uh, as you said they can very get easily get indoctrinated into so is there any merit in uh, you know um, the community service centers or kiosks where such information can be given out uh, we are now coming up with this data bill i think that has to um, cater to much of this because and that's why it's taking time you know we are studying the bill very carefully because uh, these are all issues that the government will have to think about these data centers or the kiosks or whatever whether what uh, rights they should be given and how much they can curtail because freedom of speech has to be still speech and expression that's a fundamental right we can't play with it hmm. so along with it i pr our privacy and uh, 
not being bombarded with false information all that are such intricate and such complicated issues that we need to think about them and come out with something wholesome and i feel this is an institution which which is dynamic which will keep uh, changing so we'll have to keep changing with it ma'am bringing this discussion to a close uh, just a personal question what has been and if that's okay with you uh, what has been that driving force that one conviction that has uh, led you to you know uh, to stay on your course and uh, us having this conversation today that what has been i think the urge to not to prove myself but the urge to do my best to be at the top in whatever i am doing i think that is the urge which takes somebody forward so that must be the spark behind thank you thank you for this discussion and your insights and we look forward to more and more uh, you know policy uh, uh, coming out uh, you know from your end and uh, hearing you in parliament it's been very enjoyable talking to you thank you very much